Hello, salutations. What to do is stop the gamer all father do right gang. Know the vibes like a scrub. Let's get it. And welcome to Super News, where I go over the biggest stories from this past week in gaming, especially if they involve superheroes. I drop these every Saturday, so make sure you subscribe and notifications on if this interests you so you never miss an update. Our first story is about the latest Marvel game to go into development. And thankfully, it isn't a mobile game this time. Video game industry reporter Jeff Grubb revealed during San Diego Comic Con that he had a big scoop about a Black Panther game and he delivered. We have since learned that the game is being published under Electronic Arts and is currently going by the codename Project Rainer. It's being made by a new team located out of Seattle. This development team consists of former members of Monolith Productions who are most well known for their work on Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and its sequel, Shadow of War. According to Grubb, the Black Panther game is in early development and the plan is for it to be an open world action RPG. The narrative of the game may also loosely tie into the event of the upcoming film Wakanda Forever, with the original Black Panther being dead and the player taking over for the mantle of the new Black Panther. So far, it is unknown if the original Black Panther that we're taking over for is T'Challa or his father, and if there will be character customization. EA is well known for its live service multiplayer games, but according to Grubb, it appears they are trying to be more aggressive in making single player games after the huge success of Jedi Fallen Order, which has a sequel due out next year. Our next story is about Hogwarts Legacy. The massively anticipated new open world action RPG from Avalanche Software and WB Games allows you to go on a new adventure as your original character attending Hogwarts, many years before the events of Harry Potter. The game is due out later this year on all platforms except Stadia and has since made a huge splash in the gaming industry after its state of play. Since then, all we knew about the title's release date was that it was due out in holiday 2022. Well, thanks to a potential leak, we may be able to narrow that down. The leaker in question is actually not an anime avatar on Twitter, but billion dollar company Amazon. The internet detectives noticed that the art and making of Hogwarts Legacy, exploring the unwritten wizarding world, have been listed for a December 6th release. This is notable because the book previously had a placeholder date of December 31st, meaning this wasn't an automated placeholder. As of recording, no official comment has been made by the studios, but December 6th for sure lines up with the holiday 2022 estimate, and it allows the game to release far away from God of War Ragnarok, which is dropping this November. In Star Wars news, it appears that the previously announced Knights of the Old Republic remake might be dead in the water. Fans were previously excited to learn that one of the most beloved Star Wars games of all time would be getting a current gen remake with Aspire Media at the helm. Unfortunately, it appears that development has been a complete dumpster fire so far, and the project has now been delayed indefinitely. According to Bloomberg, Aspire Media is scrambling after firing the game's art director and design director earlier this month. Allegedly, the reason behind the firings were outrageously high expenses related to the project. Nice Deal Republic was originally announced in September after three years of internal development. Aspire promises partners the game would be out by the end of 2022, and a demo was apparently finalized earlier this month to submit to Sony and Lucasfilm. However, leadership declared that the project wasn't ready yet, and shortly after that, studio heads Brad Prince and Jason Manor were fired from the company. Reportedly, the game has no chance of being released until 2025 at the earliest. Hopefully, for Star Wars fans, all the issues at Aspire can be resolved. In the meantime, fans still have Jedi Survivor next year to look forward to. In Marvel's Avengers news, the Thirst Trap Summer Skins were officially revealed. Miller leaked these previously, and Crystal Dynamics rolled them out early for select content creators and moderators for the game, which caused a bit of controversy as some content creators felt they were unfairly left out. Personally, I don't care, and as creators, we should probably stop promoting their skins for free anyway, especially if they don't really respect this. Speaking of Miller, he followed up his leak of upcoming Avengers cosmetics with the reveal that Joiner Progress was not only still in development, it was currently in the testing phase, meaning it's pretty far along. Patrol mode was previously shelved primarily because of no Joiner Progress, which is a feature most live service games have at launch, that allows players to drop in and out of another player's game during missions. Currently, if a player disconnects from multiplayer in Avengers, they can't rejoin the strike team, which has made completing the raid and OLT difficult for some players. Miller confirmed that patrol mode is still planning to be rolled out, though it's unclear when we could see all this added to the game. Fans were expecting a development blog this week, as Crystal Dynamics developer Nick previously said he was targeting the end of July or early August for the next update about future content. According to Nick, we should expect information on patch 2.6, which is cloning labs, the second Omega level threat being added to the game, plus what comes after. According to Miller, we should also expect Winter Soldier to be revealed as the next playable hero. Unfortunately though, this week's blog had no development updates, so we're now looking to next week. Players complained on Reddit about the quality of communication from Crystal Dynamics, and Nick responded. While I expect the Play Avengers Twitter account would be a lot more exciting if I got to post whatever I wanted without it needing to correspond 
around with actual dev workflows, but I don't think anyone's going to appreciate the error rate on that. But as sticking to things that are being currently worked on by the dev team seems like a better way not to be fired for lying about the game, I'll need to stick to dev updates like this, which we've so far published between every 2.x patch and since 2.2 last year. That might not be as fast as some would like, but it is pretty consistent. With that pattern, you'd probably expect there to be another one of those before the next patch, revealing details about 2.6 and some teases about what comes after. And that's a pretty safe bet. As for preferences about new outfits, we've kicked around ideas for more formal ways to collect input and that may be something we do, but please be assured the team absolutely looks at comments here and elsewhere, e.g. Twitter, and highly community requested is absolutely something that shows up in our conversations about priorities. Not the only thing, a variety of other factors impact both prioritization and then outfit creation and some highly requested outfits are just off limits to us entirely. So interesting to note there that Nick basically just confirmed that some cosmetics they just don't have access to. We assume that was the case with the lack of Spider-Man No Way Home skins, but maybe somehow that was the case with the Jane Foster MCU skin. If so, holy. If the development blog drops next week and includes a Winter Soldier reveal, Nick and Brian Wagner are gonna have a rough day as players will no doubt be reminding them of their recent attacks on Miller and the credibility of his leaks, which so far have overwhelmingly turned out to be accurate. Like him announcing Jane Foster a month before Crystal Dynamics did. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on each story, and if you want more Marvel's Avengers content, check out my latest video on Doctor Strange. Oh.